Over the last four years, I've built my small business on drawing flowers in multiple styles. And in this video, I'm sharing the books that help transform the way I draw flowers and improve my drawings the most. From individual flowers and foliage to bouquets and styles, there's something for everyone. And if you stay to the end, I'll even share some coded meanings of flowers. So if you wanna send a little love, sympathy, or even hate someone's way, there's a specific flower for that. Let's get into it. I have seven book recommendations for you, but this first recommendation has two of those books. So they are A Garden Eden by Toshin and Florilegium also by Toshin. They're both gorgeous botanical illustration books, just great for reference photos. And the reason why I have two of them is A Garden Eden came out first and that's why I own this one first. You can see I've like tagged it like crazy. Once I went through this one and I fell in love with this book, I saw Florilegium came out. So I added this one to my library and I noticed that there is actually quite a bit of overlap and Florilegium has even more illustrations than a Garden Eden. So if I had to choose between the two, I'd choose Florilegium just based on the fact that there's just so many beautiful illustrations in here. So I wanna show you some of them. They're just, yeah, this is the good stuff. The highly detailed botanical illustrations, there's descriptions, there's universal names in here so you can cross-reference and look them up. Whenever I am just short on inspiration or I just want to get some new ideas or discover some new plants, these are my go-to books for that. So you can see they're just so beautifully detailed. And if you'd like more information on those plants, then A Garden Eden is a great reference book for that. You can see that this one is definitely more text heavy than Florilegium is, but still plenty of great reference images to choose from. I'll pop up on screen a drawing that I did recently that I created based off of these images right here. If you're looking for old school botanical style illustrations that are highly detailed, then these are the books for you. And I'll leave links to all of these books right below the like button. So if you wanna check them out further, all the links are right in the video description. The next book is Flower Color Guide by Putnam and Putnam. And this includes 400 Photograph Flowers, and it's it's like my most used book. You can see I've tagged this one quite a bit too. This one was the basis for my Bouquet Makers brush set that I created. It's just filled with so many beautiful, highly detailed photographs of flowers, and they're all organized by color. And if you go to the very back, they have chip cards of all of the flowers, so you can reference them super quick if you're looking for a specific shape or color. You just come to the back and page through the back, and you can find it immediately. And you can see on the back side of each one, it's got the same information that's on the pages themselves. So not only do you get these beautiful photographs, you can also see the name of the flower, the universal name of it, the color of it, how it would be used in an arrangement or a bouquet. So that part's pretty cool. You can see that this one could be for the face or the filler in an arrangement. And then it also tells you which season is its peak availability. There's not a ton of information for each one of these, but it gives you the basics of what you need and you've got great reference photos. So I use this one a lot. And whenever I'm looking at other books that I have, if I wanna see a more detailed look at the flower, I will find that flower. I'll come to this book and look up the same flower. So this one is a very, very handy reference guide. If I were to say you must buy any of these books, this is number one. My next recommendation is Florit Farms Cut Flower Garden by Erin Benzikane with Julie Chai. This book is about tips to start and grow your own cutting garden. And the owner of Florit Farm, Erin, I've followed her for years on Instagram, so I was thrilled when I came across this book a couple years ago, and it quickly became one of my favorites. In the book, she shares tips on creating bouquets, garlands, and wreaths from the flowers that you can grow at home along with planting, cultivating, and harvesting advice. So I originally bought this book because I wanted to learn how to grow flowers at my own home a lot better. I quickly realized that this book is just an excellent source of inspiration for not only growing your flowers, but drawing them too. I love that this is split up by seasons, so you have a quick idea of what works really well for spring bouquets, you get an up close look. There's a lot of pages like this that has some beautiful photographs of individual flower stems. And for each season, she has project ideas. So here's an example of a spring bouquet, a flower crown, and these are all using flowers that she mentions earlier in the chapter. She goes through every season do's and don'ts for growing and cutting and arranging and just 
gorgeous photography throughout the entire book. So if you'd like to learn more about growing your own flowers at home and you'd like a book that has great reference photos for drawing those flowers, especially based on season, then this book is a really great resource. Next up is the flower recipe book, and this is by Alethea Haramopoulos and Jill Rizzo. This book shows how to create a hundred arrangements of either a single flower variety or layering different blooms. And just like a cookbook, each recipe includes an ingredients list with which blooms you need and how many. There's step-by-step -step instructions and photos of where to place each bloom. I bought this book so I could improve my skills of both creating real bouquets and illustrating them. I love that this book gives you such direct instructions, just telling you exactly exactly what you need and then giving you the information on how you can arrange them. The photography is gorgeous, obviously. And if I'm ever curious about a type of flower that it mentions, I just grab my handy flower guide and I can get an alternate photo reference for the flower that's mentioned. So then I have a really good idea of how to draw that specific flower. This one, if you're interested in drawing bouquets or arrangements at all, you'll wanna add this one to your library. My last two recommendations are style inspiration books. And this first one, Painting Calm by Inga Budaweiss, is a book on painting watercolor flowers. It has really beautiful projects in it and a lot of watercolor tips that are super useful, like color mixing, how to paint, even composition. And then as you go through, you'll notice, and this is what drew me to Inga in the first place. I followed her for so long on Instagram. Her color choices are so unique and unlike any other watercolor artist that I've come across. And I, I love that she simplifies things. She takes things down to their simplest shapes, but then she adds complexity and so much visual interest by how she blends colors and the color choices themselves. So I have learned so much from her just by experimenting and following her projects. I've even followed some of these projects with my five-year-old daughter. So it is very beginner friendly. So this is a must if you have any interest in a simpler look in either a watercolor style or learning how to simplify things better. And plus it's like a masterclass in color. This one is definitely up there with not only like my favorite flower reference books, but also one of my favorite art books that I own. My last recommendation, and I promised you at the beginning that I would give you some coded meanings of flowers, and this book does not disappoint. This is called Floriography by Jessica Rue. It has quickly become one of my favorite books. It's so interesting. I had no idea what floriography was, or it says it's an illustrated guide to the Victorian language of flowers. No idea what that meant, but look at how pretty this cover is. I could not resist picking it up. So Jessica's illustration style is so unique and so, so beautiful. And I love the consistency throughout this entire book of all the flowers and foliage that she's illustrated. And I wanna give you a few examples of the meanings behind these because it's so fascinating. I started reading this and I, I truly could not put it down. So I tagged a few of these I wanted to share with you. There is aster. This is a flower that I like to draw often and its meaning is daintiness. You could pair it with daisy for a gift for a young girl or buttercup to compliment someone's charming demeanor. So basil, did not know this one. The meaning is hate and you can pair it with lavender for betrayal or oleander as a warning to someone you trust. Cornflowers, their meaning is hope and love and you could pair them with lilac as a gift for a first love or sweet william to show you will always be true. And then the last one I tagged is zinnia, and that meaning is everlasting friendship. You could pair it with jasmine to tell a friend that they bring you joy, or chamomile to show appreciation for a friendship that has survived adversity. And then as a bonus, she even included some bouquets in the back. So this is pretty cool because it's got the different types of flowers that are in these bouquets, and they're just you know, look at this illustration, it's just so pretty. So there's different types of bouquets, bouquet for friendship, bouquet for courting, marriage, sympathy. So this is a really fun and fascinating read to just go through. She's included so many different flowers and foliage types that it's easy to find the one that you're looking for. And if you wanna cross-reference at any time, you can find a photographic reference in your flower color guide. So these two together work super well, or just learning about the history of certain types of flowers. If you'd like to practice drawing your own bouquets, then you'll wanna watch this video next. Once again, links to all of these books are right below the like button, and I will see you next week.